America is literally on fire, and it seems like President Donald Trump is content, in some people's views, with fanning the flames of aggression. Some say he's trying to put down looters. It's a very divided country. After more than a week of protests against racial violence that have rocked that nation, the U.S. president used tear gas to clear a path for a church-side photo op, threatened to use military force against activists. The scenes are, I don't know, they're, they're almost like an end-of-the-world movie. And almost prophetically, journalist David Frum has titled his latest book, I've got a copy of, oh, well, there it is on the screen, Trumpocalypse, Restoring American Democracy. What's it about, and how are the current events that are changing every day refracted through this book? David Frum joins us now, the senior editor of The Atlantic um, magazine right now. David, great to have you here. Um, can Thank you. Can you just uh, tell me, um, you wrote this book before we knew about the 100,000 Americans dead from COVID and before the explosive violence in response to the George Floyd killing. What have these two events revealed about the presidency in your mind? Well, they have revealed, um, they've, they've stripped the mask off. Uh, Trump had an easy first three years. Um, he, he is like someone who says, I'm, I'm a great driver. I got three quarters of the way home before causing a 50 car pileup. But we are now in the middle of the 50 car pileup. Um, and all the things that were wrong with this presidency have, have, have come to light with COVID, that you've seen indifference, mismanagement, corruption, nepotism. And with the uh, George Floyd protests and their handling, you've seen the brutality, the cruelty, the racial indifference. And all of these together come to make this nightmare today. In the book, you argue there's a pool of support for the president that will never veer away no matter what he does. Uh, do you think these protests or COVID-19, 100,000 people dead, have weakened or emboldened his supporters? Look, the, his core support, the, the problem that the book points out is it's a minority, but it's a minority that is given excessive political power by defects in the American political system. You shouldn't be able to govern the country with 35% of the people against 65%. should be the other way around. But that's not how it's, how it's working in the United States. It's not working like that, but so how does it, I mean, everybody asks the number one question, well, I want to dig into the book, but after three and a half years, everyone says, okay, is Trump, does he have a good chance of getting reelected or does COVID, yeah. does the riots, does the impeachment, does this stuff corrode his support or embolden it? I wrote about this for the um, Atlantic just this very morning. Uh, there is an easy, uh, fast style, I would say, comparison of Richard Nixon in 1968. There were a lot of riots in 1968, both race riots and also left-wing anti-war riots. Richard Nixon was the challenger to uh, Lyndon Johnson. Lyndon Johnson then resigned, and Richard Nixon won. And people say, aha, the lesson is riots elect Republicans. I think it's a stronger argument. Riots elect the person out of power. Uh, and. Richard Nixon in 1968, remember, positioned himself as a candidate not only of order, but also of justice. And every, and I quote in my article this morning, every speech he made, he would balance. There is no order without, there, there is no progress without order, but there is no order without progress. There is no justice without order, but there is no order without justice. And Richard Nixon was talking as much, and you can see it in his advertisements, as much about the brutality of the Chicago police force at the Democratic Convention in 1968. Remember, Mayor Daley was not an ally of Richard Nixon's, as he was talking about the student left and about the race riots. David, the, the domestic scene, uh, Donald Trump said he's going to make America great domestically and internationally. One of the big issues now we're seeing is tensions ratcheted up between China and the United States, uh, not just in the trade war, but now that's complicated by COVID-19, pulling out of the WHO and other issues. Where is the China-U.S. relationship headed? Look, uh, just this past week, we saw military clashes between China and India. Um, nuclear armed states, both with a common frontier, they went to war in 1962. Um, and Donald Trump incredibly invented a fiction that he had a call with the Indian prime minister, and it wasn't true. And then even more amazingly, the Indian prime minister publicly said it wasn't true and exposed Donald Trump as a liar. The United States in this very dangerous situation is trying to thrust itself, and nobody wants it. Donald Trump promised that America first would not mean America alone, but America first has meant America alone, a weakening of American global leadership and a world that is less safe because it is deprived of American leadership. You t the word you coin here is Trumpocalypse. 
something someone said to me has really resonated. They said, when Donald Trump won the election three and a half years ago, he claimed that there was election fraud. And he claimed that it was not honest. Are you worried if he loses about a peaceful transition of power? What would he do if he loses, if he claimed there was fraud when he won? Yeah. I think we should be very worried about that. And the mechanics of what will happen in the later part of this year are very important. Uh, the American people will vote on the first Tuesday in November. But that vote is not decisive until in the middle of December, the electoral college meets. And there actually are individuals. They, they come together in Washington, D.C. They're overseen by the vice president of the United States. And then there's a formal process of electoral voting, at the end of which the vote is certified. Only after that moment, in mid-December, do we have an agreed legal winner of the 2020 election. Between the uh, beginning of November and middle of December, there's a lot of opportunity for mischief. And after the Electoral College certifies, there's still more opportunity for mischief, because Donald Trump can start issuing pardons to criminal associates. He can try to direct more government money to his businesses, as he's been doing for the past three years. Um, and he can even, and this is going to be a hugely contentious question, try to pardon himself. David, just before I let you go, and you and I can talk a lot, you, you've been a longtime Republican. You worked in the Bush White House. Uh, you've written a lot of books. Right now, are you still a... I know you're a never-Trumper, and I appreciate yeah. that. You, get, you take your lumps I'm, on that. Are you still a Republican? What is this the Republican Party that you served? I'm, I'm a registered Republican here in the District, District of Columbia, where we're speaking today. Um, and... Uh, once Donald Trump is out of office, there's going to be an important work of rebuilding to begin, and I look forward to being part of that. Uh, we have to make a forward-looking center-right party for the United States that can compete in elections in which it doesn't win by preventing people from voting, in which it wins by speaking out, speak, look, uh, by uh, accumulating voters of, of different kinds. You know, that we are seeing with these George Floyd protests a, a very clear message from um, African Americans, we want to participate in the society. You know, we're not. We want to have the benefits of law. We want to have the opportunities to flourish economically. We want to be part of this. Let us in, and that is something that Republicans, Democrats should work together to achieve, and then compete, compete, and win votes by offering people better ideas, better solutions for their situations. But but what does a guy like you do? Do you vote Democrat or do you vote Republican? Now, this is the big question oh, for Republicans, and I've. Yeah, it's it's that's a it's a very easy question. In 2020, you have to get Donald Trump out of office, and you have to do that to save the world trade system. You have to do that preser to preserve the Western alliance, collective security, the domestic peace and tranquility in the United States. The idea that the president should not be a thief and a criminal who directs public funds toward his business. That, it, um, you know, it, it won't be fun, but it's not difficult. Won't be fun, but it's not difficult. Trump Apocalypse, Restoring American Democracy by David Frum. David, I look forward to more conversations. Uh, interesting new book. You got to keep writing because every single day there's a new Can't event. Can't stop. Events, events, events. Can't stop. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. We got to take a quick